All right, good morning, everyone. I am so excited to be able to talk to you today about animal engineers, birds. My name is Allison, and I am an educator at the St. Louis Zoo. Um, now, I am presenting in my home in a room by myself, and um, to prevent the spread of the COVID-19 virus, I've been wearing a mask, but because I am by myself, you'll notice that I have pulled it away from my face so that I may more easily communicate with you today. Um, now, a few things before we get started. Um, I would like to go over our community standards. All right. So as a reminder, please be friendly and respectful with all of your interactions in the chat box today. Um, also remember to use that Q&A, that question and answers box for appropriate and relevant questions to today's webinar. I will do my best to answer um, any questions that I can at the end of today. Um, please use the chat box to respond only in regards to today's webinar topic and do understand that if your behavior um, has been asked to be modified by our moderator behind the scenes, Connor, you may be removed from today's webinar. All right. So then once again, before we get started, um, I see it's already starting to come in. Please share in the chat box where you are zooming in from and how many people are viewing all with you on your device. Um, and go ahead and make sure you have that drop down box that you'll see with the chat set to respond to all panelists and attendees. If you do have a question, uh, please use the Q&A box. Sometimes questions get lost within the chat. Uh, so we do wanna make sure that we can get to them. So go ahead and enter them in that Q&A, that questions and answers box. So like I said, we do have a tech person behind the scenes, Connor. He's at his house helping me moderate this webinar and you may see him interact in the chat as well. I'm throwing out some links or maybe um, doing like some spelling words in there. Sometimes I say some tricky language and you may know, need to know how to spell it or may want to know how to spell it. So, and then at the very end, we will have an enjoyment poll to ask you guys what you thought about today's webinar. We certainly enjoy doing them. So we hope you enjoy watching and participating in them. All right, so topic at hand today, animal engineers, birds. Okay. First, I wanna know, uh, what do you think of when you hear the word engineer? Like what kinds of jobs? What do they do? And go ahead and enter that in the chat for me. Just because I'm wondering um, if we're all thinking the same thing or maybe we have different experiences. So what, what does an engineer do? What's the first thing that pops into your mind? All right, so I see build things, design things, okay. Design things, all right. Help people, yeah help people build things. Math, yes, certainly a lot of math and engineering. Oh, maybe run a locomotive, right? Like a train engineer <laughs> design stuff. Yeah, they do a lot of stuff, right? There are all kinds of engineering careers out there for humans. You can build things. Um, sometimes you might maintain engines and build engines. You might design certain things. Um, and that design and build part especially is what we're going to keep in the back of our mind when we're thinking about birds as engineers. And I'm gonna guess that maybe you're thinking along the same lines that I am in why we might consider birds engineers. Yeah, oh yeah, I saw another good one, build roads. Yeah, so birds, I think of birds as engineers because of one very special thing that they might construct to help rear young, right? And that's nests, right? Bird nests. Now, I have been fortunate enough, I've seen a couple of bird nests in my yard this year, which is really exciting in some of the trees and bushes, and I'm sure many of you have too. So in today's webinar, we're going to think about maybe how birds can construct all of these different styles of nests. And we're going to highlight a few different styles of nests because birds are, are pretty incredible at this. And depending on what kind of bird it is, and what kind of habitat they live in depends on the kind of nest that they might construct. 
So I am going to start sharing my screen with you um, because the best way to talk about this is through pictures and examples, right? You probably like to see that more than just listen to me talk. So I found this really cool picture uh, that highlights all of the different kinds of nests that birds do make. So there are some birds that don't make any nests like penguins, right? We may all be familiar with penguins. They carry the egg on their feet to help keep it warm, right? Makes sense. They often live where it's very, very cold. Um, all the way to things like ledge nests, cavity nests, platform nests, cup nests. Oh my gosh, what does all of that mean? So let's dig into it. And we'll start with probably the simplest kind of nest. And this is the kind of nests that a lot of waterfowl, so things like geese and ducks will make. And it is called a scrape nest. Right? And it's kind of exactly what you think it is. It's just a shallow depression in the ground where the bird has scraped with their feet to lay their eggs. Now, sometimes scrape nests can be lined with things like sticks, like in this picture that we see with the Canada goose. Um, they've lined it with sticks, they may line it with feathers, sometimes scraped nests are surrounded with rocks, and this can all help prevent the eggs from rolling away, of course, <laughs> right, we want to keep those eggs in the nest where they're nice and safe, but could also offer a degree of camouflage. Um, and there are, there's a great variety in eggs too in the way that they look, some are speckled or you might hear them called mottled, and that helps with that camouflage as well. And then this other picture I have here is of a morning dove nest, of a pair of morning doves, gosh, probably about five years ago, that made a nest in a hanging basket I had on my patio. And they just kind of scraped away some of that plant material that was shaping my hanging basket and used that for their nest. So pretty smart, I think, on the doves part. They were using the resources that they had and using them very effectively. Um, now, there are different species um, of desert birds that will make scrape nests as well. And they tend to make their nests a little bit deeper so that the eggs don't get as hot, right? Because if the eggs are too hot, the chick inside may not develop correctly. So pretty cool, right? So we can, birds can do a lot with their feet and just making out a little depression. But then we can get... <clears throat> A slightly more complicated and something like a burrow nest that like our puffins use. So at the zoo we have tufted puffins and horned puffins and they are burrow nesters. So these birds in the wild will find a place they may excavate a burrow in the side of a cliff um, or in some soft ground where it's nice and protected using their feet, mainly their beak, to dig that out. And our fabulous zoo capers are able to replicate that for our puffins at the zoo so that they feel safe and comfortable. So the pictures that you're seeing are a behind the scenes look at the burrows that our puffins have at the zoo. Now if you've ever seen them from the people side, if you get to go to visit the puffins or if you've ever visited the puffins before, you'll see there's a big rock wall with some holes in it and that's where the puffins can go inside. But it's still important for the keepers to be able to access these areas to help monitor how an egg is doing, if it's developing correctly, if the birds are taking care of it. Um, if there's a chick that hatches, they can make sure that chick is healthy. And then also make sure that that area stays clean too after the birds are done with it because clean is a really good way to go, especially when you're taking care of animals. I know I have pets at home. I make sure that they are clean all the time. And so do our keepers. All right, so let's see the next kind of bird nest. I think this is all fascinating. They can do this with their feet and their beaks. They don't need shovels. <laughs> all right, and another kind of nest is called a cavity nest. So some of the birds that we have around us in Missouri, uh, like woodpeckers might excavate their own cavity, screech owls might find a natural cavity, in a tree to use that as a nest, um, but then other birds that don't live in our area, like this red-billed hornbill, will use a cavity nest, but then they're all 
also going to add an extra layer of protection for the female and the eggs and the chicks that will later be present in that nest. So I put together a video and I think what I'm going to do, because I know videos can be some kind of fuzzy when I'm sharing this way. So I'm going to stop sharing my PowerPoint and bring up the video just by itself. So in the hopes that you all will be able to see it just a little bit better um, because it's really cute, I think. <laughs> pretty precious. And this is a video of our red-billed hornbills that we have at the zoo. The keepers were great enough to get this for me. So what you see here is one of our red-billed hornbills and it's doing a behavior that you would see hornbills uh, do in the wild. It is going through the ground and picking up pieces of wood mulch, dirt, leaves, hay. Um, in the wild, they might pick up things like droppings and fruit, and it's collecting that. And they're collect, and it's collecting that because what it will do is take these materials back to its nest site and start to mud it up. Right? So this red-billed hornbill, you can see its beak is really long and curved. And that's so it can dig a little bit better into the ground to get those materials that it needs. So here we see the red-billed hornbill starting to use that mud, that stuff it collected, to start to seal up around that hole, that cavity. And the female will remain in the cavity with the eggs and then later the chicks when they hatch. Uh, but what's gonna happen is eventually only a small space a small opening is going to be left open in that cavity so that it's very hard for anything to get in and out. So the female and the chicks inside are ultimately 100% reliant on the male to bring them food and pass food back and forth to them through that very, very small opening. So it's a great way that these animals can remain protected during a pretty vulnerable part of their life when they're young and when they're growing up and getting strong. Now, eventually, uh, the birds will get big enough, the babies will get big enough that they'll break out and they'll leave the cavity, but mom and dad will still be around to help take care of them. So it's a really neat process and I hope you enjoyed that video. All right, so another kind of nest is called a platform nest. And it kind of is exactly what you think of it. The, the way it's constructed looks just like a platform. And you see this kind of nest in a lot of birds of prey or we at the zoo might refer to them as bops <laughs> or birds of prey or different raptor species. And platform nests are very often absolutely massive. These are huge nests that are constructed with big twigs, pieces of grass, um, and the male and female will work together to build these things. Now, I think the best example of platform nesters at our zoo are our cinereus vultures. Um, they work very hard every year building their nest and maintaining their nest. And they even have a new platform for their nest to be raised up onto. Um, it's really precious watching them work together, sharing sticks and passing them back and forth and finding just the right spot for those sticks in their nest. Um, but locally in the United States, Bald eagles are also platform nesters, and they construct huge nests. There have even been nests that have been so heavy that sometimes the tree kind of topples over and breaks. But these birds will come back to their nests year after year and reuse them, right? Because they're big, they're sturdy, and they are safe places to raise their young. Pretty cute. <laughs> All right, now we are at the most common kind of nest that I think when we, and at least when I think of bird nest, this is the first thing I think of, and it is a cup nest. So something like a cardinal nest or a robin's nest, one of those bowl shaped nests. And I am fortunate enough to have an example of uh, a couple examples, actually, of some different variations of cup nests. Um, I was lucky enough to get these from our biofact collection at the zoo. So we have some really cool and very interesting things that we can look at up close to see exactly um, how intricate and amazing these nests are. All right, so we'll start with kind of a traditional cup nest and I'm gonna hold this very carefully next to our screen, my camera here so that you can see it. Okay, so this is just a regular cup nest. 
And we've all probably seen one of these before. So there is woven together. I can see lots of bits of straw, grass. Um, there's some mud, some small sticks. So like there's some mud right here, helping keep the nest shape together. And so there are a lot of other birds that will use mud in the construction of their nest besides the hornbills. Uh, this nest is even lined with some different kinds of hair. I'm going to tilt this very carefully. So we've got some, I don't know if this is, I can't tell if it's animal hair or cotton. It's a little bit hard to tell. Um, it looks like there might even be some different kind of hair here. Looks like some longer hair, maybe it's human hair, uh, which by the way, if you want to help birds, it's best to leave natural materials in your yard for them to use as nesting material. Um, things like pet hair and human hair um, can actually cause problems for birds. Uh, pet hair it can be if you have your dog or cat on a flea or tick treatment, still have some of those uh, pesticides lingering on the hair that could cause problems. And human hair they found, since it's so thin and so strong, can get wrapped around legs and wings of birds. So it could be problematic. So just leave out grass clippings, hay. If you cut down plants, leave some of that in an area of your yard for the birds to pick up. And yes, this is a real nest. This was collected. This was sanitized. Um, I do not suggest if you find a nest in your yard handling it, um, because there could be things like mites in it. But this is Right, typically what we think of when we think of a bird nest, right? That's what I think of. Right, so usually bird pairs will work together, weaving this all together and constructing that beautiful little woven spot. And then I have another example of a kind of cup nest uh, because there's the kinds of cup nests that might sit in a bush in between some branches or on a tree, but then there's also um, something like a cliff swallow or a barn swallow. They make a version of a cup nest too. So give me just a moment. I'm gonna set this down. And we will look at a cliff swallow nest. Now this I'm going to leave in the container to show you because it is pretty fragile. And this one is real as well. So this is a um, barn swallow nest. I believe I said cliff, cliff swallow, that was, <laughs> that was inaccurate. So there's mud lining around the outside of this nest. And back here, I'm gonna hold it as best as I can so you can see this area is flat. So this is the side where it would have attached against um, a wall. Like barn swallows, we always think of them in barns. I know my grandma growing up, uh, always had barn swallows that would make a nest like this underneath her carport and then they'd get really angry <laughs> if she came out to try to drive her car because they're like, you're near our nest. I'm sure you've experienced that too sometimes if you have birds <laughs> in your yard, they kind of yell at you. <laughs> so we've got mud holding up the structure, a nice cup of um, grasses and different hays and straws. And then this one has also been lined with feathers is an extra way of protection and maybe a little bit of insulation for those babies. So that's our another kind of cup nest. These are just fascinating. I really like, just wanted to point this out, I really like this red feather that these birds found to put in there. I just think it's interesting. <laughs> Okay, and then we have our last kind of really complicated nest. And these I think are the most complicated nests. And they are the pendant or the sphere nests. Right, so things like our white-headed buffalo weavers that you can also see at the zoo make sphere nests. And these are the round nests. And this buffalo weaver, this picture of it, it may look a little bit messy, um, and that's okay. It's gonna give a little bit of camouflage to that nest too, but essentially they've woven together, once again, sticks and grasses and hay and leaves and all kinds of natural materials that they could find into this nice round protective nest. Uh, these kinds of birds, they make an opening for their nest towards the bottom of it where they can enter and exit safely and also keep their chicks in there safely. But what's 
really interesting is that they've been observed in the wild finding twigs from trees that have thorns on them and they'll line the outside of their nests with thorns as an extra layer of protection and they often will roost or nest together so you'll see you can see lots of these kinds of nests in the trees together so we have a nice protective nest but then you also have the protection of having your neighbors around but let's see some two examples of that. I don't have white-headed uh, buffalo weaver nests, but I have some other examples of some pendant nests or sphere nests is sometimes what they're called. Okay, so here's the first one. I thought this was a really nice one. It just kind of looks like a little, a little clump. Okay, but inside, open this up very carefully. See if we can see it with the light if I hold it. There is a nest inside. So it is lined inside to have protection and a space for those babies to hang out and the eggs. Okay. And we've got, once again, more natural materials here making up this nest. And here's the stick where it once hung. Now it doesn't hang quite as stably as it once did, but you get a pretty good idea with that there our last nest to look at. All right, here's a really good woven one. All right, so it just kind of looks like a little ball of hay. But if we look closer, you can see how it's all woven together. Once again, just using their beaks and their feet. Right, at the zoo, we talk a lot about adaptations for survival. And you can think of them and how animals obtain food, how they defend themselves. But we also maybe need to think of them too and how they can construct places to keep their young safe. Right? As if you think of the bird like a duck with a long flat bill, it's not going to be able to construct a nest like this, which is why ducks usually do things like scrape nests. Right? And they have that bill because of the food they eat. So they adapt their behavior to make a nest that works for them. Right. And I'm not sure what kind of nest this is. I'm gonna look once again, I don't think my label says. It just says weaver bird. There are a lot of different kinds of weaver birds out there. <laughs> but really, really beautiful nest. Okay, all right, so we are reaching the end of our discussion about birds' nests. Um, like I said, if you want to help birds in your area um, have safe places to raise their young and materials to help them construct these nests, the best is going to be natural materials. So those things like I mentioned, like grass clippings, leaves, um, if you have some small thin twigs, like if you've trimmed a bush, um, set up a little area in your yard, keep it quote unquote wild, and the birds can use those items to help make a safe place for their home. Um, now, observing birds making their nests is a really, really difficult thing right? because they're making these to keep their babies safe. And they want these nests to be kind of hidden and out of the way and safe from predators. So if you notice birds making a nest in a certain area of your yard, you might want to steer clear from that area for a little while, even though it is really tempting to get over there and see what they're doing. But if you're over there too much, they may recognize you as a threat and abandon that site. So um, definitely, if you get a chance to come to the zoo, we are opening June 13th. Uh, you can get reserved timed spaces on our website and you can walk around our bird garden and see what our birds are doing, right? See how they're making their nests. So if you do get a chance to make your reservation for free to come see us, please remember your mask. Um, they are required for all of our guests over the age of nine. And of course, while you're there, maintain social distancing and wash your hands. Um, that's the best thing we can all do to help keep us all safe and healthy. So I can see I've got a few questions in my Q&A there. So I'm gonna pull those up and see what you guys are wondering. And if you're still wondering, for sure, put a question in the Q&A for me. Ah, good question. What is a cavity nest? So a cavity nest uh, can be something that's just like a hole. So we can think of a cavity as a hole. So 
if you're ever looking at a tree and it seems like there's an empty space in it, that's a cavity. Um, a cavity could also be an area on the side of a rocky cliff that you can go into a little bit. Um, so that's a cavity. And a cavity nest, if a bird uses that, like our locally, our screech owls and uh, things like woodpeckers, those are the two that are coming to mind right now, <laughs> they may line the inside of that hole with something nice and soft, like those grasses and leaves and maybe feathers so that the eggs just aren't on a hard surface. So, all right. All right, okay, except for the penguin, do most birds lay more than one egg? Hmm. I'd have to think about that for a little bit. Um, I don't wanna give you the wrong answer. I have something that I think I know in my mind, but I'm not 100% certain on it. So I'm not comfortable saying it without having like my data to, to back it up. Um, but at least a lot of our songbirds things like cardinals and robins will lay more than one egg. All right, and what type of nest do peregrine falcons make? Hmm, good question. I believe they are ledge nesters, so they'll find a flat ledge to make their nest. Um, but once again, do double check me on that. I want to make sure that, that that is correct. All right, folks. So with that, we are out of time. <laughs> I enjoyed sharing some bird nests with you today. Um, I hope you had fun learning and looking at some of the different kinds of nests. And please don't forget to uh, take that enjoyment poll for us at the very end. So stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy, and we can't wait to welcome you all back safely at the zoo again soon. All right, bye.